Hello everyone, welcome to session 5 of LTech 620. This week we're going to talk about two things. First, concepts about graphics, and then second, working with color. As we've done before, we're going to swing the pendulum over to the visual literacy side of our Venn diagram. More specifically, we're going to talk about one, concepts about graphics, two, notions of pictorial competence, and three, the functions of pictures in text. Now, in order to do all of that, I want to set things up by talking about concepts about print. So what are the concepts about print? Well, those concepts are the knowledge of how one reads print in books and how books and print actually work. This knowledge is a pre-reading skill that children develop before they even know how to read. So when we're talking about concepts about print, we're talking about young children, usually in the two to four age range and sometimes a little bit older. Now, here are some sample concepts children need to know and understand in order to be successful at reading. For example, children need to know how to hold and open a book. They need to understand that books have parts such as a title, an author, and a back cover. And they need to know that words are made up of letters, and letters in different orders make up different words. Children also need to understand that spaces separate words, and that punctuation can create different meanings to sentences, such as I am here, period, versus I am here, question mark. So why are we talking about pre-reading skills? Well, I wanted to talk about concepts about print as kind of a warm-up to talking about concepts about graphics. This leads us to the idea of pictorial competence. And believe it or not, there are many factors involved in perceiving, interpreting, understanding, and using pictures or graphics. This is not something humans are automatically able to do. Making sense of pictures is something we gradually develop over the first few years of life. So take a look at this research by Deloitte and colleagues. These pictures show infants who are looking at pictures of baby bottles. What's interesting about this and why I'm showing it to you is to highlight the idea that infants initially respond to graphics or pictures as if they were real objects. In other words, if you look at the first two pictures on the left and in the middle, those two infants don't realize that the bottle in the picture is a picture. And so they're trying to use their hands to touch and grab the baby bottle. Now, the child on the right is actually taking things a step further. Not only does he not realize that it's just a picture of a bottle, he's actually putting his mouth down to the bottle to try to drink it. So this is a great example of the concept of pictorial competence. And these children are so young, of course, they have not developed the idea of perceiving, interpreting, and understanding in using pictures. This is something they will most likely learn as they move through life. Full pictorial competence involves both perceptual abilities and conceptual knowledge. Here are some of the skills and knowledge that are part of this concept of pictorial competence. On one level, this is so basic to our modern existence, we tend to forget that humans need to develop this kind of competence when they're born. I wanted to share that in order to lead us to the concepts about graphics that children learn as they are exposed to different visual representations. In fact, researchers have identified eight different concepts that children must learn related to visual representations. One of those concepts is related to action. And this is the idea that static graphics can sometimes show dynamic action. In other words, one of the things static graphics can show is movement, even though the image itself is not moving. For example, you can imagine a drawing of a baseball player swinging a bat, and you might see some lines behind the bat representing the air being moved by swinging the bat. Those lines, of course, suggest movement and or action. Another important concept is extension, and this is the idea that some graphics provide additional information that is not present in the written text that comes with it. 
So there may be more information in the picture that goes beyond or extends what is the information in the text. Relatedly, we have the concept of importance related to graphics. This has to do with the idea that some information in a graphic may be more important than other information. In other words, you have to learn to decode graphics to figure out what's implied and what is and what isn't important. The fourth concept is intentionality. This is the idea that designers or illustrators choose or create graphics to accomplish a communicative purpose. Within a larger text, the graphics are usually there for a reason, and we'll talk about some of those reasons in a few minutes. The point is, children learn that graphics near text are part of the messaging from the author or designer. Another concept is partiality, and this means that not everything written in text must be presented in graphics. When working with text and graphics, there's some judgment involved in what should be represented as a graphic and what should not be. Of course, some concepts are easier to represent graphically than others. Another important concept is permanence, and this is the idea that graphics and printed text are permanent and that they will not change over time. That sounds completely obvious to us as adults, but again, this is something that children need to learn about graphics and the world. The seventh concept is related to relevance. This is the idea that graphics are usually relevant or related to the written text. They're there for a reason. This is especially true in picture books or storybooks. It's also true in textbooks that children encounter in school, as well as other things they encounter in the real world, such as movie posters or street signs. In all of these examples, the graphics and the text are typically related. The final concept is representation, and this is the idea that illustrations and photographs represent objects or concepts, but they don't have the same physical properties as those objects or concepts. Now, believe it or not, it takes quite a bit of time to develop concepts about graphics. So here's a study from 2013 focusing on 60 children in pre-kindergarten through grade three. In a minute, I'm going to show you a stacked bar chart with each bar representing a single grade. The legend explains how many concepts about graphics the children actually understood at the time of the experiment. And there are four categories. One, students have full acquisition of zero to two concepts about graphics. Two, students who understand only three or four of the eight concepts about graphics three, five or six concepts, and then finally four, where children understand all seven to eight concepts about graphics. Here are the results. Take a look at pre-K, that's the left bar. In pre-K, children are usually three or four years old. And as you can see, three of the children at the pre-K level only understood zero to two concepts. Seven of them understood three to four concepts, and two of them actually understood five or six of the concepts. Now, let's look all the way to the right and look at third grade. Even by third grade, when children are typically around eight years old, maybe nine, only five of the 12 students, or 42% assessed, actually had full acquisition of all eight concepts about graphics. So the point is that developing concepts about graphic takes time. This is something we want to keep in mind in general when we're designing visual representations, and in particular when we're designing visual representations for children. This brings us to the idea of the different functions pictures can have in relation to text. One of those functions that pictures can have in text is that of decorational. This is simply the idea of decorating the page in a way that the graphics have little relationship to the text content. You can see here on the right an example of a children's worksheet called Odd or Even Coloring. The directions say, color the odd numbers red and the even numbers pink. I guess this is some kind of Valentine's Day worksheet. But as you can see, the hearts and the pictures of the children are simply decorational because hearts have no relationship to odd or even numbers. And so they're simply there to decorate the page to make it more interesting visually. Another function of pictures in text is representational. 
The purpose of representational pictures is to mirror part or all of the text content. As an example, here's a screenshot from a children's book. Let's take a look at the text first. The text says, Look, said one of the water bugs to another, one of our colony is climbing up the lily stalk. Where do you suppose she is going? Question mark. Now, if we look at the picture, we can see the water bugs at the bottom of what is presumably the lily stalk, and they're looking up. In this example, there's a mirroring between the dialogue in the text and what is actually being depicted in the picture. So that's an example of the representational function of pictures and text. Another function of pictures and text is organizational. The purpose of organizational pictures is to provide a useful structure for making sense of the text's content. And here's an example of a Venn diagram that's providing some structure to help the reader make sense of what could be described in a text. Presumably, such a visualization helps readers understand where there are overlaps between the characters of different alphabets. A fourth function of pictures and text is interpretation. The interpretation function helps to clarify difficult text. Here's a picture that depicts a human eye and labels all of the different parts. In this example, there's a close relationship between the picture and the text. All this information could be conveyed via text only. However, it would take a lot of words to explain all of the parts of an eye and their relative location in detail. In this case, a picture really helps with the interpretation of the words being read. Again, this is an example of an interpretational function. Finally, we have the transformational function of a picture in text. The transformational function of pictures is to include some sort of mnemonic component to aid recall. In this example, we see the L-E-A-N mnemonic, the lean mnemonic, which describes which drug should be used to lean on in case of an emergency, lidocaine, epinephrine, atropine, and Narcan. So those are the five functions of pictures and text. And we sometimes take these functions for granted, but there's nuances to all of them. And knowing the different ways text and graphics can work together is part of our responsibility as visual designers. Take, for example, your pharmacy products from Critical Reflection 1, Drugstore Cowboy. Did those products contain graphics and text? If so, what function did those graphics play in relation to the text? And how about with the business cards you designed for Critical Reflection 4? Thinking about these questions is a good exercise as we develop our ability to analyze, evaluate, and critique visual designs. Speaking of which, let's talk about Critical Reflection 4, Open for Business. Obviously, this was all about exploring color and adding it to your design toolbox. We learned that color plays a crucial role in design as it has the power to evoke emotions, communicate messages, and influence the overall perception and impact of a design. For this particular assignment, you had to take nine pieces of information, such as the client's name and title, along with the business's name and logo, and create a business card and then apply three different color schemes. Now, as we look through your designs, I want you to think about how various design decisions, your compositional choices, might impact the affective experience of seeing the business card for the first time. What emotions and or messages do the designs convey about the owner and the business itself? Do the colors send a message of formality and professionalism? or perhaps a message of mystery and intrigue. With that in mind, I will now present your designs without comment. See what you notice. What stands out?
So there you have it, folks, a wonderful collection of visual experimentation and graphical inquiry. So where are we going next? Well, our next stop is a big one, typography, the art and technique of arranging type to make written language legible, readable, and appealing. Okay, everyone, we're out of time for today. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Canvas.